Hey everyone, I am Claire and I am with Claire's Creative Corner. It's um, just a sewing group where people can share creative ideas, what they're working on, projects, tips, tricks, all the good stuff. I'm doing a little tutorial um, just of me sewing up the K as Kona Designs Little Heartbreaker. Um, I am also using her modified um, gusset option two, which has the zipper, um, in the center of the gusset instead of at the front of the panel. This is, um, kind of a themed bag and I think my theme fell flat, but I'm just going to finish the bag. Um, it's an Alice in Wonderland theme, but the actual theme for this market that I'm making the bag for is tea party. And I went to the tea party in Alice in Wonderland, and then I was like, oh, what about the little cookies and um, the little drinks that she had to drink to get small and big? And so I was like, I'll make one that looks like a heart-shaped cookie that says, eat me. And it wasn't until I got really close to finishing all of that that I realized maybe that's um, like a little bit of an adult innuendo, um, but I, I added some other context clues, so hopefully... <laughs> It's not horrible, um, but this is what I ended up with. Um, let me get my threads that I want to use for my machine. I'm going to use Wizardry Sewing String. This is her Fairy Floss Text 35. I used it on my Juki 2010. And let me find my bobbin that goes with it. I wonder if it's already in. Let me look. No, I think my uh, my other one's in. So let's change out my bobbin. This was her celebration thread that I used most recently. All right. If I was all my f oh, they're in a bag somewhere. I have some nice bobbin um, grippers holders. Where are they? Here they are. I like these because the sewing string is bonded poly and so it can be kind of stiff and flop around but these little clips are really nice to hold it all right here it is load it into my bobbin things on okay. here's this guy and let's get going let's see if I don't bump this while I'm sewing all right I go up down and over and down again and then around my tension spring there around and through this metal thing I hook it onto this guy through this over and down back through that in this thread guide and then in that thread guide and let's see if I can get my automatic threader to work for me sometimes I can I can't. Usually I give up after a minute. Great. I think I got it. <laughs> I hate doing that. One of these days I'm going to figure out how to thread this thing. I've done it before, but it's always just um, luck of the draw. Okay, so I'm going to put aside all of these panels. We're going to start on our zipper, and this is the modified um, zipper gusset that we're doing. So. I've got my zipper tape cut, and here's my lining in my main. I'm going to put these two aside for now. I don't have any quarter inch double sided tape, otherwise I'd be using it, but um, that would be your best bet to keeping this from shifting as you sew, so let's just hope I don't shift. I'm going to... um baste this down really fast and then I'm going to add the uh, lining piece but this is your zipper face down on your main 
gusset piece. I'm just going to do this. Baste it on, and then once I get it basted, I'll go back and do the correct seam allowance, which is a quarter inch. get our lining and we're just going to sandwich that zipper so the right sides of our fabric are facing each other and the right side of your main is facing the right side of your zipper so now put a couple clips on here to hold it steady and we're going to sew this on at a quarter of an inch and if you have a little thread guide or a seam guide you can use that if you feel so inclined and back stitch From here, we're going to finger press our seam allowance away from your zipper, just like this. Come around and do the same thing here. And after we've got it kind of pressed away, we're going to match this edge, this raw edge, together. And then we're going to top stitch down that zipper seam at one eighth of an inch. And then we're going to baste this closed so it doesn't shift around when we go to sew our panel together later. Alright, so we're going to top stitch this right here. I use a little bit of, let me move my seam guide, sewer's aid to help my foot slide over. Be sure and test this on a scrap so that if it's not compatible, obviously you wouldn't use it or if it stains it. All right, lengthen your stitch line. Um, a little trick so you don't have a back stitch line there. You can start on the edge here and back stitch there. And then once you get here, oops, excuse me. I'm stuck on my thread piece, my thread tail. From that. There we go. All right, and from there, I'm just gonna. So I've got this guy stuck somehow. What is it doing? Let me just keep going and see if it goes away. <laughs> it's always a good trick. Oh, I see it. There it goes. It was just stuck in there. Let's make sure your pieces are still lined up.
just like we did before so you don't have to back stitch down the seam that you'd see you would back stitch within your seam allowance there there we go all right now I'm just gonna flip it over and baste let me make sure just a quick quick basting pitch down this edge within your seam allowance to hold it together. Alright, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side now. So, get your main gusset piece here. We're going to put it face down, ignore my piecing of my interfacing. <laughs> Try to use up all of it. All right. Face down here. We're just going to baste that in place. If you have double sided sticky tape, you can just do this all in one go and um, use that to hold all your seams together and do a one pass stitch. the right sides to be touching our fabric and our zipper sandwiched between and now we're going to go in at a quarter of an inch seam allowance just like before now we're going to finger press again and do our top stitch we're done here just go ahead and add your zipper pulls so you don't forget let's get these stitched together Then we're going to baste this raw edge, this open part, together so it doesn't shift when we're sewing this later. Alrighty. Alright, there is our zipper gusset. Alright. Let me grab my zipper pulls. I think I was going to do, I like rainbow. I feel like it matches everything. I want to do two. Um, I just prefer that because if you have just one, I feel like you have to open it all the way and then things can like fall out easier. Um, I wished I'd done two on my other one. So that's what we're going to do here. If I can get it. Some people are pros at this. Some people use the jigs, the little zipper jigs. I haven't figured out how to use that yet. I need to get my lighter clean that up so it doesn't fray later. I'm going to do this side. Alright, put this one on. Okay, my little zipper coil here was a little uh, broken or something. It was catching on the opening of the zipper, so I had to work on it a little harder. All right, so there's your zipper gusset. 
Just throw a clip. Let's do our D ring connectors. All right. So I've already drawn my center line. Actually, I didn't. I lied. But I did add my double sided tape. And so I'm just going to fold that to the center and top stitch along the edge here. I think she does one eighth. personal preference. Just as long as you catch. Beeping. Look how pretty that is. Alright, let's do this one. Alright, so that's your D-ring tabs. Let me get some D-rings. Looks like, what size? One inch? Maybe three quarters. One, two. No, looks like one inch. Alright, let's see what I've got. Order some more. All right. So she slides the D ring on, folds the bottom edge up three quarters of an inch or so, and then folds the top down to meet that. And then we're just going to clip that doesn't look like yeah she doesn't sew this yet so just clip that and set it aside uh, I'll use these same for our other we're gonna work on our strap next I can figure out where I put everything All right, bear with me. I'm um, deviating from her wrist strap because um, I want to add a pop of the color of the lining. So this is the wrist strap cut out as it is, and I just cut out a approximately one inch uh, width of the lining fabric. And then what I'm gonna do is top, I'm gonna fold this in I need my double. <laughs> Forgot to do that part. Uh, I know I have more double sided too. All right, let's anchor the fabric in the center because that would have been smart. So do that. Don't be like me. And back to where we were. So I'm going to stick all the way down. And if I had a key fob um, clamp thingy, I would have used it as well, but uh, I don't, so that's what we're doing. So she leaves this open here, so she doesn't have the bulk of two, the seam to go through, so I'll show you that in a second. Let me just finish this part. Put 
make sure you do it where your D-ring is going to fit through. Or onto it, I should say. Okay. So it's going to look a little bit like this. Make sure we can slide on. Yep. Okay. So from before she starts top stitching, she opens this seam up and sews this together. I gotta move some double sided tape so it doesn't stick to my machine. Or here, I'll just stick this on it. Cover it back up. I'm just going to sew this seam closed, and then once it's done here, then we'll top, press that seam allowance and <clears throat> fold it into our thing. You, just watch. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of words. but that is okay because it just tears off. All right, now press that seam allowance open and then we can get top stitch going. I didn't plan that well. I should have added, let's see, should have done, that's okay. This, oh, I put this on the wrong side anyway. Turn this around. If I can get it to go. There we go. Once I get done, I'll, uh, Let me think on that. This is a raw edge here. What can I do differently? I'm sure it's pretty simple, but I was not planning this well. What is scrap of my black fabric? I will leave. You can see what I do. Hold on. Can I shove this in here? Cover that up. Basically, let me make it a little more narrow. I'm eating Tic Tac, sorry. All right, cover up those <laughs> raw edges. <laughs> We're gonna make this look intentional, y'all. All right. Now just top stitch around your whole thing. Here we go. Okay, so there's that side. And let's go to this side. Now, here's our wrist strap. She says you can sew across 
or use a rivet to kind of clamp this closed like this. So I'll probably use a rivet. Let me just kind of move the thick seam off to one side so it's not directly in the middle of it. There we go. And then I'll just rivet through. And this will be our wrist strap. All right. Oh, well, not bad for uh, winging it. A little bit of thread showing. All right, so I'll rivet that here in a little bit. But the other side, let's see. Would have been smart if I made the black a little bit bigger and then I could have riveted through the black. Instead, hmm, if I shift it this way, bear with me. Can I move it? Can I get it through that? I might hammer this seam and try to get it dead on the center. And that way I can get a rivet through the black. Sorry, I was off camera. I'm gonna hammer that seam, I think, so I can get the rivet right there. Okay, moving on. We're gonna get our gusset pieces. Remember, I'm doing the modified gusset. Um, so this is a longer bottom gusset, okay? I'm gonna trim up this so it's straight. Same for this side. Just clean it up a little. Singe the edges so you don't have any fraying. All right, so there's that, and there, all right, now we're going to get our main bottom piece, line it up, hmm. one's a little shy, I'm just going to line it up to one edge. I wonder why I'm so far, so off. I wonder if I cut this the right width. Doesn't matter. But, yeah. So, same for this. And we're gonna sew that at a quarter inch. I have no idea why it's so off, but I was in a rush yesterday when I was cutting so that could have been the reason. Now, we're gonna pull that away and top stitch this edge right here. You put a little bit of my sewers, my oil, my grease, whatever you've got. Lengthen your stitch length. And then remember if you don't want your back stitch to show, just go down. All right. So now that we've done that, please double check to make sure you have zipper pulls on because you can't go, um, once you do this, you can't go back. Well, you could, but it would require seam ripping. So now we're just going to sandwich this other side, doing the same thing, right sides to right sides, all right, a quarter inch as well. Here we go. Flip it out. What is this? All right. And let's do oops, come on, our top stitch on this side. I finger press that seam. Here we go. Some people use a um, Teflon foot. 
Uh, I think I broke mine. So I just use this narrow foot. I forgot to lengthen my stitch length. That's all right. Not moving on. Okay. So I know in the main heartbreak heartbreaker bag she does D ring connectors there, but with the little one. She adds um, them later with, uh, I believe, rivets or Chicago screws. All right. Let's close up our... Actually, let me trim this. I'm going to trim this flush, and then we're going to stitch baste our gusset together so it doesn't flop around. Okay? Okay. So let's baste... I guess it together on the edges here. The woven kind of wants to walk or stretch. So if yours is stretching, um, don't despair. Use a better interfacing, not like me. <laughs> I'm going to let there be a little pucker here. Same for the other side. I'll do that. So make sure this is nice and tight. All the way up, and I'll just give myself a little pucker here because, well, we're not perfect. So, here is our gusset. If you're doing a pocket, this is the point you do the pocket now. I'm trying to figure out if I want one. Let's see. Do I want a pocket? Could cut this straight across, add some binding, and then this could be a little pocket here. Let me do that. So I'm gonna cut this straight across and we're gonna bind it because I had a scrap piece. All right. We're making a pocket up because I think pockets are awesome. So I'm going to bind um, this edge. Let me clean up. I want to see the white. All right. So now I'm going to put right sides together on my pocket. I'm going to go across the top, fold it over, and voila. up so cover that seam on the back put it in place okay. this is what it looks like Lengthen your stitch if your fabric is sticking and add a little, well not, if, lengthen your stitch because you're top stitching. And if your fabric sticks, you can add that sewer's aid. All right. Trim your edges flush. And then we're just gonna find a good spot on here to add it. Sew it on. Let's see. 
going to make sure I stay out of my seam allowance. This might be too high. Well, maybe this goes in the seam allowance then. I'm alright with that. Here we go. Alright guys, we put a pocket on. The original pattern calls for a mesh pocket and there's a pattern piece for that, but this is what I did, so there's our pocket. Alright. Bag label. If you have one, if you want to add one, now is the time. Get a little piece of sticky tape. Where'd I put it? Where it is. Here it is. So my front is obviously I don't want the tag on there. So I'll put it on my back piece. Which where'd it go? Alright, so she does give a recommendation on where you can put your tag. Um, she says she does 2 and 3 eighths inch up from the bottom. Obviously, the awesome part about making your own stuff is you get to pick wherever you want it. And so, I've been putting, I do like it on the bottom where she suggests it. So, let me see. I gotta get these little things out. All right. So, let me get my ruler. One, two, three. So it's right around here. And then you just want to make sure you are centered and level. So I'm going to go over to my big uh, cutting board, my big mat, so I can see that this is center. All right, we're getting close, y'all. So I've got my tag centered and up about two and three-eighths of an inch. And now we're just going to stitch that baby on. Next steps. We're getting close to the end, y'all. We are going to be basting our front and back main pieces together. So let's get started. Move that out of the way. I'm trying to think, do I want this? I don't think I want this one on the bottom. All right, nice long stitch. See, I didn't catch this one right here, so let me go back. And then before I do anything, I'm just going to trim up, make it all even. Um, so there's that guy. Same for this. Now, I'm kind of curious if I can get my fringe stuff to stay outside of my seam allowance. As I'm putting my gusset on, I'm going to try to push this outside of the seam allowance because I don't want it to be, I want to be able to see it. And I got kind of close here. To my seam allowance, so I'm just gonna mark him with it. 
Don't give up. So I'm gonna go clean up my edges and then we're gonna get ready to put our gusset together. All right, so we are gonna get our gusset and mark our centers. So you can make a little snip if you feel comfortable doing that or you can mark it with the marker or pen that you can remove or keep it within the seam, allow seam allowance um, more if you think your clip's not going to move, use a clip. More than one way to skin a cat. I use the snip method. So, there we go. I'm going to turn like this, and we are going to match up our main to this. Actually, I want to cut my center notch here too. Don't forget. Does that look right? Make it a little deeper so I can see it. Alright. Go down here. Then if you want to go ahead and do this to your other panel, might as well. We're on the topic. Oops. Here's that one. Go this way. And snip. I'm going to find those pieces later. Alright. Just want to mark it so I can see it. Okay. So, let's start with our front. And match up those notches. Okay. If you want to use a stapler that can help give you a little more leverage as you're moving about and easing it in so that it doesn't shift, your clips don't shift. So let me find my stapler. All right, let's do this. This is a boss stitch and it's got really long um, stitch uh, staples so that it can get through your uh, thick material and plus you can Get really close to the edge with it and know what you're doing usually so get those center points matched and i'm gonna staple that so it doesn't move on me there we go okay so now you can ease it in as I throw something on the ground. If you want to start with clips and then go back and add some staples after the fact, you can do that. And I haven't um, gone through and done any uh, snipping on my gusset yet. If I get to the end over here and decide, hey, I need a little bit more ease to get through, then I can do a couple snips here and there. So we'll see if we need it. Once this is done, you're gonna bind your edges with some bias tape. 
and that's how you finish your bag so also she does the uh, d-ring connector last um, remember how I said I was gonna move my seam uh, my elastic decorative piece out of the seam allowance Let's see if I can pull it out Now I notice that my clips hold really well when I start, but as I start to force this through my machine, that's when my clips start popping off. And so that's why I like the added uh, stability of the staple. So now that I'm there, I'm just gonna staple this. Same thing here. Match that edge. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna look in here, make sure my trim is out of my seam allowance, like right here. All the prep work ahead of time helps things go smoothly. So I've pushed it out of my seam allowance. I've got everything set. Let's stitch. start on this long edge here. So you're doing your quarter inch seam allowance, so here we go. All right, here is the time to check, make sure you caught everything. You can see a little bit of my basting stitches. Um, I didn't want to go too far over here, but it looks like I can if I need to. Um, I might just pull those basting stitches out, we'll see. Ooh, poked myself on a staple, guys. Take your staples out. <laughs> and then, You'll want to get your binding tape and get ready to bind. Um, I have some of that sticky self-adhesive binding from Fabrics Therapy, and I do enjoy it. Um, let's see what color I'm going to use. I think I got like two or three 
uh, different colors. I don't know where my hemostats are. I'll find them in a minute. All right, what else is there? This guy. And he popped. For another one. Yeah, right here. Oh, wait. No, just a part of it. Okay. I'm just gonna push it through and double check everything. Let's see what it looks like. I'll just pull this basting stitch out, I think. Yay. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I really like it. Minus the whole, I forgot, I wasn't paying attention to the, the wording there. So I'm just going to ignore that. All right. Put it back there. Open your zipper so that <laughs> when you're done, you can open it a little easier. All right, let's do the other side. All right, I'm just starting off with my top and bottom snips, uh, my center marks, and right sides together. Now I'm just gonna go around and ease it in, use my clips. Thankfully I don't have to worry about um, the trim on this side so it'll go a little faster hopefully not be as much of a pain in the rear end i feel like i always get it clipped and i'm like oh look it fits so perfect and then as i'm sewing it you know everything shifts so always don't get my hopes up. <laughs> and don't hold yourself to too much of a high perfection. Give yourself a little grace. This is handmade. Although some people are perfectionists, that's perfectly fine. I uh, used to be, and now that I have too many children. Um, I am not a perfectionist anymore. Maybe when things slow down <laughs> again, I can spend more time on my perfectionism. All right, I'm gonna hand staple that. We are going to do the same thing, everyone. Quarter inch seam allowance. done with this we'll bind and I'll probably have to do that on a separate video because I gotta go get my youngest from school
that's it, y'all. She is ready to be bound. And she got a pocket. Cute. All right, let me get these staples out. And I gotta go get ready to pick up my little one. If you want to trim your seam allowance on your curves in your dip to help it lay nice and clean when you press it out, go for that now. You can use pinking shears, scissors. Make sure you're happy with your stitching before you start cutting, just in case you need to do some adjustments. I am stuck, stitched over that staple. <laughs> I'll go back over that because I took that staple out and kind of messed up that stitch line. Yeah, that's better. All right, let's check that we caught everything. Oh, it looks pretty good. All right, um, so now we're gonna bind it. I feel like um, I missed a spot where she top stitches, but since I've got this trim, I wasn't gonna top stitch. Before you went and added, uh, I think your other guess it uh, she top stitches this um, heart on the front um, which I didn't do you can tell all right uh, so binding and I'll come back with that um, after my kids are probably in bed it's gonna be pretty cute I think even though it's a little risque. <laughs> I think it's going to be fun. Okay. Where's that? Alright, dude. Don't get in too much of a mess. So, I am going back through and trimming down my seam allowances. And I am doing that with my little munchkin. And he's telling Google to stop. Because that's all he knows how to tell Google to do. He's very good at yelling it to stop. Because we use Google Timers a bunch <laughs> for his big brothers. Oh. Yeah. We're not climbing this. Thank you. So I'm just trimming the bulk down. And then we're going to go back through and do our bias binding. Dad. <laughs> what? Oh, there's a staple still right here. I missed that guy. Let's see. Please don't climb in here. It's really hard for me to do stuff in my lap with you. Alright, he's ignoring me. Might be making a purse with a 20 month old. Just a minute. If I don't cut my finger off. No staple. I missed that one. Um, I don't know where it cut me off before, but I trimmed up my seams with my pinking shears, and now I'm just going to go through and use my bias tape here from Fabric Therapy. It's got a peel and stick on it, and I'm just going to use that all the way around, and then sew it on it says it's um it doesn't fray and i'm not sure if it's just the first few inches that i've got some of these little hairy pieces um but yeah okay i've got a helper 
You can hear him in the background. Just gonna quickly singe. Hopefully close off those edges. I'm just going to start on a long edge and fold it over nice and even. And we'll just do this all the way around. You kind of have to finagle your way around the curves. Um, but it works. Do we like this pastel? I don't know if I like that or the black and white. Hmm. Let me grab the black and white and look at it. What you doing? Oh, garbage. Thank you. Yeah. You probably need all my garbage. Do I like this better? I feel like this just pops more. Let me put this one away. We'll use that for something like with solid color. Here's my helper. The one for my thread snips. No, you don't need my pins. Nope, leave my threads alone. Come sit in my lap and you can help me. Yeah. No, not that one, this one. I'm gonna use this one. Ready? Yeah, yeah be my helper. Ready? You wanna put a clip on it for me? Let's get the clips. Here we go. Hold this one. Thank you. Yeah, and we're gonna put it right here. Good job. You hand them to mommy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ready? Right here. All right, get another one. And we're just evenly folding it over the edges. Thank you. Oh. There we go. You want to get another one? And it is sticky, but I like to clip it just so it doesn't move around as we're sewing. All right. Here. Right here. Thank you. Do we have more? You can get some more. Right here. Yeah. More, yeah. You put it right there. Once I start whoops, sewing, I'll adjust yeah. as I go. Yeah. Thank you. Hold on. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Oh, one at a time. Yeah, that one goes right there. Kind of get it around this curve. Oh, such a helper. My little helper. Oh, you don't need a seam ripper. Although I bet it's really dull. No, thank you. You have any more clips you can give me? We're making our way all the way around. Wow. Yeah. We're almost there, little guy. What'd you find? My markers? The one you've already torn apart? Yep. That's the one. And just overlap it slightly. Can you close the marker? I don't need it right now. Oh, don't color on my machine. No, sir. Here, where's the paper? Can we go find a piece of paper? Right here? You want to color on this? Right here? 
Oh, you find a ball? Easily distracted. All right. Um, so like I said, I'm just going to overlap it a little bit. There we go. And just put a clip here. So from here. Mm-hmm. You think I need a ball? You going to put the ball right here? In the hole? Good job. Ball in the hole. Very good. There it is. Ball. Ball. Yeah. No, we're out of my at that one. Can you hold the ball for mommy? While we sew? Yeah. Excuse you. Yeah. So, heart facing down. Starting on the long edge again. Thank you. Where did I put? Oh, wait. Don't take that yet. There it goes. I'm going to do this. You keep an eye on it for mommy. Remember to keep your finger. Uh uh, no fingers. You want your ball back, even though you threw it? Let me get it. I bet this would be a lot easier without a, a helper in your lap. Thank you. I, no, mommy can't sew it up there. Let me hold this one. Why are you pushing? Finish this side. Yeah. Can you point at the numbers for mommy? Can you point at these numbers for mommy and count? For one, two, three. <laughs> yeah. You want to do your ABCs? Oh, slobber. Look, yuck. You want to do A, B, C, D. Why do you got push? Hmm. 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 You got that big ball shoved in your mouth. That's probably a choking hazard. Can you take it out? You can put it on the ground. Just straightening out. The tape, hopefully. Uh, Can't really tell. No, thank you. No, we don't put the clips back. We're all done with the clips. Alright. Yeah? What? Oh, you're going to steal that? You saw your moment. You went for it. You helping? Here we go. Hold it right there. Alright, I'll readjust from this side. I 
job. Smooth it out. Can you help me again? <laughs> yeah, you're my helper. Can you do it again? Here we go. We have no idea what this is going to look like, y'all, but if your sewing looks better than a uh, almost two-year-old's, you're winning. Oh, he lost it. <laughs> I want that back, man. Where'd it go? I'm going to use this. Thank you. I think if my seam allowance um, was deeper, mm. I could mm. sew closer to the edge here. Mm. Um, uh. But I trimmed that seam allowance down uh, to help with bulk. Mm. Mm. Um, and so I don't want to get too deep um, to where I'm sewing past my seam allowance. What are you doing? Can you go down there and clean up that mess? Can you pick up some of that garbage that you threw away on the ground? No? Not having it. Okay. I hear you. See, if I go past this quarter inch, I'll be into my seam allowance. So I'm trying not to. Um, what? Are you mad that I set you down? You, it, I don't want to clean up that garbage, Mom. Well, I hear you. I didn't want to clean it up either. I don't know why we had to throw it on the ground. Oh, you find Blanky? Yeah, you found Blanky. Okay. We're almost done with our binding. You're helping me. Oh, good, babe. See, if we pick that up, it wouldn't be stuck to your foot. All right, sit here while I finish. Cut a blinky. My helper. Are you going to take that clip? Oh, you got tall hair stuck to you. Is it stuck? Mama. Which one do you want? This one? There. Mama. You want to hold it? Thank you. Can you put it back? I gotta use it right here. No? You tell me I need to find something else? I'm almost done. Can I just use it for a little bit longer? Here we go. Almost done. A little bit more. Can I? I will give it right back to you. <coughs> Sir. <coughs> Nobody wants to listen to a YouTube where the 18 month old is crying or the 20 month old. Is. The third kid, I don't know how old. You almost got your finger so. Alright, let's take a peek. The gander. Alright, so we are. Stitched on. What I will do is, I think, go through with my whoops scissors. No, that's how you get your finger in the needle. No. Yeah, see, that scared you. Let's turn it off. I'm gonna go through with my scissors and just trim this a little closer to the seam allowance. Well, I turned it off because I don't want you to get hurt. So anyway, not bad with somebody in my lap. So that's that side, and then we'll do the exact same thing over here. Um, I'm not going to film that because this is chaos here. So I will come back when that is done, and you will see what I mean when I say I'm going to trim it up. So we will be back. Okay, so... 
we are almost done with our little heartbreaker bag the wristlet size from KS Kona designs I am going to sew the binding on this side now um, I did this side yesterday and I had to pause and come back to it because I ran out of time so let's do this I think my kid unthreaded my machine so let's re-thread that Alrighty. So with the uh, heart facing down and your gusset on top, this is where I'll Let's flip it out and look at it, guys. And then I think we will add our D-ring connector. All right. Give it a little push. All righty. Let's get our... D ring connector. She um I think put it somewhere over here. So we'll need to poke a hole right about here. As close as you can get to that D ring to hold it steady. Um and if you want you could probably stitch. I might do that. I might do a stitch line. I don't know that she does that in the instructions, but um, I'm going to do that. Get as close as I can. So, I'm going to bring this over to my table over here so we can watch, uh, we can do the whole okay. So, I've got my little cutting mat that I do my holes with, and my hammer, and oh, here's my wristlet strap. I said I was going to hammer this seam down because I have a vision of what I want this to look like. Just like me. All right. And then get this guy right there. All right, and then I'm gonna punch a hole here. That's my plan at least. I wonder which one's sharper. Let's try this guy. All right, okay, I made it through this one, and did I get through? All right, I did. Let's pop a rivet in. Okay. This is a long enough prong. Oops, missed it. Try again. So I'm just gonna squeeze it on here. Make sure it looks good. Right. Hopefully that's centered.
here's that so here's our wristlet strap and now we're gonna punch a hole through our d-ring connector let's see I want it just right there I guess maybe two I wonder if I can do two Not my whole poker. There we go. And do one more. Right about there. All right. Really hope these prongs are long enough. This one should be fine. Let's see about this guy. All right, I want my D-ring connector. I think like right here. So, just center it. You got a little pan. Where did I put it last? Easiest way is probably take the rivet out and poke a hole or um, mark through the hole. There's that one. So I get that pin to go through. There we go. Alright. Thing you know. There. Let's get the base. See if we can get this on. I have a feeling it's not going to be easy. Okay. There's my dog barking. Yeah, I don't know if this prong is long enough. I'll give it a go. All right, well, I couldn't find any longer um, rivets, prongs, uh, or whatever, but we're just gonna manhandle this and hope it works. Otherwise, I will go back and do like a um, Chicago screw. All right. So there's one. I'm just gonna get the other guy in. Find its hole. Whoop. guide it with my tweezers. Pretty sure that's that. I'm just pushing the fabric around that base so I know it's in all the way. And then we'll get our This part, move that guy. This one's gonna be a little easier, I think, because it doesn't have to go through as much. All right. Press. All right. 
crooked, but <laughs> it's in. So there's that. So let's zip it up. I'm kind of wishing I'd used better stabilizer. But say la vie. I think is the phrase you would use. If I could go back, I would change it, but here's our little wristlet strap, and it's done. So, hope you enjoyed making the little heartbreaker, and please leave any questions or comments in the comment section and please share your uh, your finished creations in either the K as Kona design group or in my group Claire's creative corner have a good day